What is up guys, Alex from Lucky War Games here and welcome to today's Aussie Arch Bone Reapers tactics video. Today we're going to be jumping into our allegiance abilities and we're going to be going through all of the battle traits in the battle tome. Okay, so, as said in the introduction today, we are going to be looking at the battle traits for the Aussie Arch Bun Reapers Battle Tome. You can find these on page 74 and 75 in your Battle Tome if you wish to follow along. Battle traits are absolutely awesome rules for the Aussie Arch Bone Reapers, and these are rules that you will have regardless as long as you're playing inside the Aussie Arch Bone Reapers Tome, and not something like a Grand Alliance Death Army, um, then you will get all these additional rules for all your units, and they are all absolutely awesome. They are broken into six different rules, and they are the Aussie Arch Bone Reaper Legions, Ranks Unbroken by Descent, Deathless Warriors, Naderite Weapons, Relentless Discipline, and Aussie Arch Commands. Now before we get into deep diving and breaking these down and some of the cool things that we can do with these, I just want to say off the bat I'm not going to be covering the Aussie Arch Bone Reaper Legions today, and the reason for that is basically this rule in the Battle Traits allows us to pick one of the following sub-factions. There are six different sub-factions, and they all have really cool uses and purposes, and I believe that they would be better served in a separate video where I can go more in depth into all of them without making the Battle Traits video too long. So we're not going to be covering the Bone Reaper Legions today, and they will be in a separate video further down the line. So with that said, let's jump on in and look at the first rule here in our Battle Traits, and that is Ranks Unbroken by Descent. Now this is a nice simple one, and it's just do not take battle shock tests for friendly Aussie Arch Bone Reaper units, which is absolutely amazing. Now, admittedly, all the Aussie Arch Bone Reaper units across the entire battle tome are Bravery 10, so the most effect that you're going to get out of this is on your uh, Mortec Guard if you're running them in sort of a, bl a brick of 20 or 30 models. Because that way, if you do lose sort of 10 or 15 of them, if a combat goes really bad, if they get absolutely smashed by an enemy hammer unit, and you take a lot of casualties, you would have to be taking the uh, battle shock there. And obviously, if you lose sort of 10, 15 models, that spells really bad news, even if you're bravery 10. But just being able to outright ignore it completely for all of our units is awesome. Now, like I said, Mortec Guard will benefit from that the most because they are the most numerous thing in the book. A lot of the things like your Death Riders or your Amortis Guard or your Stalkers um, usually aren't in units big enough and take enough casualties in a turn um, to have to worry about Battle Shock. But just in case the unit does arise in the fact that you've taken, say, six Amortis Guard, you've lost four of them, then you don't have to worry about taking those additional casualties from Battle Shock. So, nice and simple, we get to ignore all of the Battle Shock shenanigans. Next up is Deathless Warriors, and that is friendly Aussie Arch Bone Reapers have a ward save of 6+. plus. Now this is standard for all death armies, it's pretty much in every battle tome for every death army, everyone has a 6+, plus ward save. This is awesome, it used to be that you had to be within, sort of wholly within 12 inches of a friendly death hero to be able to get the ward save, but now it's just all units have a blanket 6+, plus ward at all times, board wide, um, so that is great because that means Things like your Death Riders can go off onto a flank and do their own thing, and they get to keep the ward save. You don't have to be hugging anyone or doing anything like that. So you're going to be getting your armor save, and now you also get a 6 plus ward. Great. Our third rule here is Naderite Weapons. This one is a little bit more unique, but if the unmodified hit roll for an attack with a melee weapon by a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper unit is a 6, that attack scores 2 hits on the target instead of 1. Make a wound roll and save roll for each hit. This ability has no effect on attacks made by mounts unless noted otherwise. So that is really, really cool. It's basically roll a six to hit and you get to do double uh, double hits onto your opponent, which is awesome. Again, this is absolutely book wide now. So as long as it's a melee weapon by an Aussie Arch Bone Reapers unit and it isn't a mount, then everyone has this book wide. Again, this is something that used to just be specifically Naderite weapons where um, weapons like on your Mortec Guard they have Naderite blades, um, but something like your Amortis Guard who have Dread Halberds, uh, the Mortec Guard would get it, but the Amortis wouldn't. But now it's just a book wide rule of exploding hits on sixes. So this happens on Stalkers, this happens on all of your heroes like a Liege Cavalos, Death Riders, etc. Um, even uh, Catacross himself with his massive sort of halberd attack um, can get Naderite hits. 
It does stay there, but the only thing it doesn't count is mounts, so if you're using something like Death Riders, the Death Riders themselves with their swords and spears will benefit from Naderite weapons, but the mounts when they use their hooves and teeth attacks will not benefit from this. Similarly, uh, things like the uh, Mortis and Soul Mason, his staff will get Naderite weapon attacks, but the ossified claws from his chair, which is technically a mount, um, will not. Uh, companions are treated as mounts, I believe, for benefits of attacks. But the awesome thing with Catacross is his companions. Um, you will see it in the text on Catacross's page, which you can find on page 96. Um, it says that this unit, accompanied by a personal guard armed with retinue blades, the Naderite weapons battle trait applies to attacks made with retinue blades. So that makes Catacross doubly awesome because now him himself gets Naderite uh, weapons and even though his companions there usually wouldn't, now they do thanks to the little text on the end there that says unless noted otherwise. And I believe Catacross is the only one in the book that gets to bypass that. Uh, sadly things like Arcan where he has his mount um, doesn't get to use Naderite weapons with its Evan claws but yeah is what it is and Naderite Weapons is absolutely fantastic in the right situations. Next up on our list is Relentless Discipline. Now this was an awesome change from the old book um, and allows the Ossiarch Bone Reapers to be able to use uh, what we'll get onto next, the Ossiarch Commands in Absolute Spades and it's one of the things that makes this army so powerful. Now the text for this is, if you command a Ossiarch Bone Reapers army, when you receive your starting command points, you receive extra command points as follows. These command points are cumulative, which is absolutely fantastic. So we have three different bullet points here. The first one is you receive one extra command point if there are three or more Ossiarch Bone Reaper units on the battlefield. Then you receive two extra command points if there are five or more friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units on the battlefield. And the last one is you receive three extra command points if there are seven or more friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper units on the battlefield. Now, as it said in that last uh, sentence of the text there, these do stack with each other. So if you do hit the requirement for seven or more friendly units, not only do you get the three extra command points, but you also gain two and one um, because obviously seven also hits the requirements of having three or more or five or more friendly units on the battlefield. So that means you're getting six extra command points after the ones that you've already taken on. So if you're going first for that turn, obviously you get one command point there, then you're going to be gaining these extra six, giving you seven. And if you went second in a round where you're going to gain two command points, you gain these extra six, that's going to give you eight command points before anything else. Um, if you have any other, other rules or things on the table that are going to be giving you command points. And having that many command points in your back pocket is absolutely amazing. And that lends us into the next thing we're going to be looking at, and that is the Ossiarch Commands. Now, if you command an Ossiarch Bone Reaper's army, you can use Ossiarch Commands in addition to any other command abilities that you can use. So that means we gain all of these commands on top of everything, such as All Out Attack, uh, All Out Defense, Redeploy, Unleash Hell, all that, etc, etc. So these are all command abilities you will gain access to in addition. Ossiarch commands are command abilities that either appear on the war scroll of a unit that has the Ossiarch Bone Reapers keyword or are included in the table below. In addition, the restriction that you cannot use the same command ability more than once in the same phase does not apply to Ossiarch commands. So that means, um, and there's a designer's note here actually that says, you can use the same Ossiarch command more than once in the same phase as long as that command is issued by a model that has not already issued the command in that phase and is received by a unit that has not already received a command in that phase. So that means you are able to use the same command twice as long as it is being issued um, from somewhere that's eligible to issue it and that the same unit isn't taking the same command twice. So for example, uh, like our top one here, we'll dive into this in a second, but if you wanted to use reform ranks twice in the same phase, as long as that was being issued from two different locations and received by two different units, then you could use that ability twice. Whereas something like an all out defense, you can only use it once per phase on a unit. And this is one of the things that makes Ossiarch uh, Bone Reapers so strong, um, in my opinion, is the fact that they have access to these commands which is really unique and gives them a lot of abilities to be able to sort of adapt on the fly as the battle is playing out um, and it really gives you a lot of tools to deal with a lot of situations in the heat of the moment where you usually wouldn't be able to and 
other armies don't get that opportunity because they are locked into sort of the standard commands that everyone has access to and you sort of know what's going to happen and you can pre-plan for it but Ossiarch Bone Reapers have so many tools in this toolbox here in the Ossiarch commands that you just can't really uh, pin them in in that same way. So let's jump on in and have a look at our Ossiarch commands. There are seven Ossiarch commands for us to get through and we're going to start at the top of the list and work our way down. So the first one is called Reform Ranks. You can use this command ability in your movement phase. The unit that receives this command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit. That unit can retreat in that phase and still charge later in the same turn. Now this one is absolutely fantastic because it stops your units getting locked down into combats that would be unfavorable. Um, one thing that I really like to be able to use this for is something on like Amortus Guard or Necropolis Stalkers. Say if you go into a combat with an enemy, say you went in uh, against sort of 20 goblins for example and you killed 15 of them or so including with Battleshock and there's only 5 left, um, it then goes to your opponent's turn. Uh, sorry, in your opponent's turn, and then it comes back to your turn. Now you're going to be stuck in combat with those five silly little goblins, um, which obviously is a waste of, say, six Amortus' guards' time. Now you can be able to use something like Reform Ranks to be able to retreat your Amortus guard out of that fight so they're not locked in by five silly little goblins, and they can go off and kill something or take an objective or do something more worthwhile with their time rather than being locked into combat. Which is great because that means even if your opponent tries to do it on their turn and they try to tar pit you, maybe they've tagged a couple of different units to try and lock you down. That means that a couple of your units with the ability to be able to use reform ranks on multiple units, they're never going to be able to lock you in as long as you have the command points spare to use. Another really good thing for reform ranks is your Cavalos Death Riders and the Liege Cavalos. Uh, because they have the unstoppable charge where they cause mortal wounds um, depending on the charge roll that they make. So that means even if you wanted to stay fighting the same target you could retreat your death riders, just move them back a few inches so they're no longer in combat and then you can charge back in onto the enemy, you can inflict your mortal wounds again and then you get to obviously attack in that phase. So reform ranks is really great for being able to stop you getting bogged down and deal more damage with your charging cavalry. Next up on the list is Unstoppable Advance. You can use this command ability in your movement phase when you pick a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit to make a normal move. Add three inches to that unit's move characteristic until the end of the phase. Now this is really, really cool and it's very, very helpful. Um, it has two different uses in my opinion. The first one is to take things like your Amortis Guard, your Mortec Guard, who are usually really, really effective, but their downside is they're really, really slow. For example, Mortec Guard only move 4 inches and a Mortis Guard only move 5. Now you are able to boost that up by 3, making them movement 7 and movement 8. Um, and that is almost nearly Night Haunt movement. And as someone who plays Night Haunt also myself, that's really, really quick, to be fair, for a unit of skeletons. So, for example, your Mortec Guard, you could have 30 of them. Now they're all movement 7. So if you really need to sort of double time, move towards an objective, um, or just get across the table in those opening turns, now you can do so. This is also really good, again, on the cavalry, something like the Death Riders. Being able to give them plus three move now makes them move 13. And even things like the Gothsar Harvester, because we can double up on the commands, if your Harvester was supporting a nearby block, uh, brick of Mortec Guard, it means if you want to move those Mortec Guard up forward faster, you can also put it onto your Harvester, and the Harvester can now keep pace with them. That also works for all your little support heroes, so things like Bone Shapers or Soul Masons, who are moving a bit slower, can also keep up with the units that they want to support. So if you need to get somewhere really quick, it's a fantastic way to be able to move uh, sort of a handful of units a lot faster. Next up is Renit Construct. You can use this command at the end of the movement phase. The unit that receives this command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit that is more than 3 inches from all enemy units. You can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to that unit, or if no wounds are allocated to it, you can return a number of slain models to that unit that have a combined wounds characteristic of D3 or less. Now, there is a lot of healing already in the Ossiarch uh, Bone Reapers book, 
which we'll get into more depth as we go through the units in the tactics guide here. But we have things from like Catacross, Arcan, uh, the Bone Shaper. The Bone Shaper can take an artifact so he heals twice. And then Renit Constructs is just a really nice uh, way to have even more healing sort of board wide on the fly if those support heroes are not in range of healing uh, your units there. One of the things that I really like to use it for is because you don't have um, you have to be outside of three inches, so you're not going to be in combat. Is those support heroes are great for healing units that are in combat, but if the support heroes themselves are maybe being shot at, or if it's something like a um, like Arcan who doesn't really want to be in combat unless situationally the uh, moment arises, then and you don't have enough heals from somewhere else, the Renit constructs can be a great way to heal up your support heroes who aren't in the front line. Um, heal themselves up by a few wounds as well. Of course you have to ask yourself is spending a command point really worth it um, to be able to heal d3 wounds because it might just be a wound back um, but for example when you use like things like the relentless discipline and all the other command points that you can generate through this book it's something great that if you know you're not going to be using the command points it's best to just use them for heals than to lose them. As well as the sort of small support heroes there, this is great to something to put onto like Mortet Crawlers, Ogothasar Harvesters, things that get shot at a lot, um, very easily so due to their size, um, they can't really hide there. So if you're hiding in your support heroes inside of sort of a unit of Mortet Guard, say like a Bone Shaper for example, the Bone Shaper can carry on healing the Mortet Guard that are in combat, um, and then the Renit Constructs can be used on your sort of backline support pieces like Harvesters and Crawlers to keep them functioning. Next up is Counter-Strike. You can use this command ability in the enemy charge phase after an enemy unit has finished a charge move. The unit with this receives this command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit that is within 3 inches of an enemy unit that made a charge move in the same turn and more than 3 inches from all other enemy units. Add 1 to wound rolls for attacks made by melee weapons by that unit in that combat phase. Now on paper this is a nice and simple one if one of your units is getting charged by the enemy as long as that enemy unit that charged is the only one that is within 3 inches um, of your unit at the time then you can pop this for a nice plus 1 to wound which is absolutely awesome because the Ossiarch Bone Reapers book has so many different ways to get plus 1 to hit um, you also have access to all out attack as well to give yourself that plus 1 to hit um, Catacross is the prime example of giving plus 1 to hit with his supreme um, Lord of the Bone Reaper Legion's ability. So you have lots of ways of giving yourself plus one to hit. There's a few different ways to give yourself plus one to wound, but obviously that is a lot of a rarer statistic to buff in the game. But now you are able to have access to both. If the enemy is charging you, that is, um, you use this sort of as a counter offensive, hence why it's called counter strike. <laughs> um, but for that turn, you can really make the enemy regret charging you. For example, something like a Mortis Guard who hit on threes and wound on threes, you can very easily make yourself that turn uh, sort of plus one to hit and plus one to wound, therefore now rolling on twos and twos, which is awesome. And it's a great way to be able to buff yourself in the rare is instance that the enemy has a sort of minus one to wound ability, something that's very rare in the game, but when it does hit you can be very, very annoying. Something on like Death Riders or on Mortet Guard that are wounding on fours, being reduced down to a five is absolutely horrible. So if you get charged, having a way to be able to sort of buff yourself back up to your normal uh, ability to wound is awesome. And like I said, combining that with buffs to hit as well from other units, then you can really make the enemy regret charging you there. Next up we have one of my favourite ones here and that is Impenetrable Ranks. You can use this command ability when a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit is picked as the target of an attack. The unit must receive this command and until the end of that phase add one to ward rolls for that unit for the purposes of the Deathless Warriors battle trait. So if we remember correctly one of our battle traits that we looked at earlier was called Deathless Warriors and that is the one that gives our Ossiarch Bone Reaper units a ward of 6 plus. Basically when you are targeted by an attack it doesn't specify um, what kind of attack, so that can be uh, a shooting attack or a combat attack, uh, anything that is targeting you, then you are able to boost your ward, say for Deathless Warriors, up to a 5+, plus, which for a command point to be able to double your chances of passing the ward so you get a 50% increase um, is absolutely amazing, especially once you combine this with your um, 
armor saves across this army um, which is awesome on things like again a mortis guard something that's meant to be sort of that tanky defensive unit you have a base three plus save and now you can give yourself a five plus ward save and on a unit like that that's got five wounds a model you can make yourself really really substantially tanky there um, at the sort of click of a button so that can be really great if the enemy really commits themselves to try and take out a unit then you can just flip that switch on the ward save and save yourself taking a lot of extra wounds. Next up we have Bludgeon and this is also another one of my personal favourites. Um, this is a command ability you use at the start of the combat phase. The unit that receives this command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reapers unit and you improve the Ren characteristic of that unit's melee weapons by one until the end of the phase. Now that is absolutely fantastic. Um, you can use this on basically anything um, because everything has the <laughs> Ossiarch Bone Reapers keyword, but all of our units that want to be in combat are already quite scary. Things like Stalkers and Immortus Guard are base 2 rend anyway, so if you use Bludgeon, you now have rend 3 on sort of your big hitting units. Even on something like a Mortec Guard, they have two attacks each, you can now give them rend 2 as well. One of my personal favourite tricks is with a Gothasar Harvester who has Ren 2 on his uh, bludgeon attacks. You then use the bludgeon command to make him Ren 3 and you can combine this very nicely with the new hero in this book which was the Ossifactor um, who uses the refined creations. He can give plus one Rend to a Harvester or a Morgast unit. Um, so then you basically are getting plus two Rend on your already base two Rend making you Rend 4. Um, and there's even a spell in this book that reduces the enemy armor by one. So if you really want it to be horrible, you can get some of your units in this book up to Rend 5 um, by casting a spell and using a command point and taking a hero. But anyway, that's <laughs> a bit too much there. Um, but yeah, being able to boost your Rend um, sort of on the fly there is absolutely awesome. And again, because of the little designer's note at the top, you can put this across multiple units. So you can really flip that switch, go on the offensive. Um, and if the enemy doesn't have a lot of ward saves, but they've got high armor, you will be able to get your sort of hammer units to really crack down on that armor. Things like Stormcast will hate you for this because they think they're sitting on their 2 plus or their 3 plus armor save. Then you can out of nowhere just go, yep, yeah, I'm now Ren 3, I'm now Ren 4, um, and absolutely smash them to pieces. The last one today is Unflinching Coordination. You can use this command ability in the combat phase after a Ossiarch Bone Reaper's hero has fought for the first time in that phase. The unit that receives the command must be a friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper's unit that has not yet fought in the combat phase that is within 3 inches of an enemy unit and wholly within 12 inches of the Ossiarch Bone Reaper's hero. That unit fights immediately. There's also a designer's note here that says if the unit you pick to fight immediately is an Ossiarch Bone Reaper's hero, after that unit has fought, you then cannot use this command ability, ability to pick another friendly Ossiarch Bone Reaper's unit to fight immediately. So because at the top there we're allowed to use the Ossiarch commands multiple times, it basically means you can't fight with a hero, use unflinching coordination to then target another hero to then make them fight immediately, then after that hero's fought, use unflinching coordination again on the other hero so then pick another unit and fight immediately for a third time and um, so yeah that designer's note just counters that out and stops us being a bit cheesy in that regard but this is absolutely awesome for uh, the liege cavalos or uh, arch cavalos xanthos so if you have sort of one of them tied up with a unit of death riders and you get them both into charge it's awesome because that means you can fight with your liege cavalos or Xantos first, then you can use unflinching coordination to be able to let the Death Riders fight. So not only have you now hit them with two unstoppable charges causing mortal wound impact hits, but you're now fighting with both your units before the enemy even has a chance to strike. Another good use for using the unflinching coordination is with something like a Catacross, if Catacross is say with a unit of Immortus Guard again, they're a really good unit for uh, an example for this because they want to be using their bodyguard ability to shield your heroes. So you can attack with someone as mean as a Catacross and then use unflinching coordination to draw in another unit like a Mortis Guard, like Necropolis Stalkers, even more Tech Guard and be able to fight them immediately. And with the damage output from something like, a ca like Catacross and then something like Necropolis Stalkers, you can really cripple the opponent's sort of main line before they even get a turn to strike and that can be really, really big. 
That brings us to the end of the Osiarch commands list. I know there was quite a lot to go through there. Um, the battle traits are all very straightforward, and then you get to the Osiarch commands, which can be really complicated. Now, just remember at the top there, the uh, restrictions to using the Osiarch commands, so not more than once in the same phase, um, can you use it on the sort of same unit issuing or receiving but there are some really nice combos you can pull out there so for example in different phases you could use unstoppable advance in the movement phase to move a unit an extra three inches then you charge on in and then you could use bludgeon later on um, because they're two different phases um, and you could have them from two different sources a lot of the things from the book, so the Guard and the Stalkers, are also elites, so they can issue commands to their own unit, which is great. So if you have a hero that's coming up in support of them, a hero could un uh, put a command ability onto, say, one of those units, and then the units themselves in a different phase can give themselves a different command, um, which is absolutely great. There are absolutely endless possibilities <laughs> between the usual command uh, from the rulebook and the Osiarch commands and also all the commands on the War Scrolls um, that obviously we will cover when we get into the tactics for each specific unit. But there are so many different things that you can cook up and combine together. There are some that will sort of uh, go against each other. For example, Bludgeon to give yourself plus one uh, Rend uh, would counter, say, with a Mortis Guard who can use on their war scroll they have a thing called crushing assault that lets them fight twice in the same combat phase again because of that little design is not there we can't use them together because they're both combat phase commands the same unit cannot receive two commands in that phase um, but there's a lot of different ways that you can mix these uh, things up there and cause a lot of damage to your opponent as well as also having things like the deathless warriors to make yourself more tanky relentless discipline really helps you unlock all of the commands there and then once you add in things like Nadarite Weapons and Ranks Unbroken by Descent, it's just sort of extra buffs on top of all the awesome things we can already do in this book. But we're going to leave it for there for today, guys. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below which of your these battle traits are your favourites. What do you like to combo these things with? In the next video, we're going to be jumping on into the command traits and seeing what we can do with those. So as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe. Happy Wargaming. Psst. Hey you! Did you know that Lakey Wargames now has an official eBay store? You can buy yourself all kinds of pre-painted and new on sprue hobby goodness and support the channel at the same time. There's a link in the description below if you want to check it out. I'd greatly appreciate it and it's a fantastic way to support the channel. Okay, see you in the next one.